Okay, this demo is to to use R to study uh, how the length of a DNA word influence their occurrence in uh, sequences. And this is exercise to understand why we can use a longer uh, restriction enzyme with longer uh, recognition site uh, to cut a DNA in fewer pieces. So first download the sequence, uh, an R file from Moodle. So the file should be nucleotide, nucleotide word, uh, re demo.r. And once you download it, uh, you should open it in RStudio. And so then you need to install two package. One is called uh, uh, sequence in R, the other one is called ADE4. And after you install, so you just highlight them, uh, click run, they will install. Oh, uh, yes. yes. Okay. And depend on the internet speed, it may uh, take a few minutes to install them. Um, let's make sure the sequence. Oh, sequence. Uh, yeah, they are all uh, installing. Yeah. Okay. So once they are uh, installed, you don't have to install them again. Uh, you can comment out, put a pound sign in front of it. And then they will be common. Uh, next time when you run the code, they won't be uh, uh, running anymore. So then we can load the package sequence R, highlight that line, and then click run into the current R working environment. And then we need to change the current working directory to the the to the where the files are downloaded. So in our studio, you can go to uh, a session, set working directory to source file location. And then you can look at the bottom. That's where my uh, file is. It's 3.2 R sequence demo. Right. So in Windows, it's slightly different, but uh, same thing. So once you have changed the working directory, you can uh, list those files in the current working directory. And uh, you can also click on the right, see the files. There, that's the file, nucleotide word re demo. And that's the sequences. OK, so we can first, uh, we can read the PMSH2 sequences into R and run again. So there's actually only one sequences. We just take that first sequence out. OK. Uh, you can scroll to the top to see the sequence. They are now in an array of call a vector in R. That's kind of hard to see, right? So too long. So there's one method called change all those uh, vector into string called C2S sequence. And then you print out those sequence uh, in a long string. So this time it's still cumbersome, but it's a little easier to see that. So Right, those are the PMSH2 plasma sequences. If you want to see what this the C2S does, it's basically a conversion of a vector of characters into a string, a long sentences, basically. So after we have loaded the plasma sequence into R, and what we can do is first to uh, calculate nucleotide composition. So how many ACGT are there? So, well, all of them sum up should be the length of the plasmid. Right? So if I say sum them up, uh, that should be the total length, right? 9325 nucleotide base pair. That should be the total length of that, uh, of the entire gene. Plasmid, sorry. Length is one. That's the same thing, yeah. So now, in 
In R, we can also find out the reverse complementary sequences of uh, uh, DNA. So if we, this is basically uh, how we do this in R. Uh, ATG, we first change it to a uh, character and then do a complementary and then do reverse. So reverse complementary of ATG and then change it back to a string. So you can just copy paste, just kind of idiosyncratic way of R to do this, but you can just uh, take it uh, as, uh, as it is. So highlight that line wrong. Right, so, whoops, cat, okay. So ATG, uh, reverse complement is C-A-T, that's right. <laughs> so ATG, reverse complement ATG is actually cat. Okay, and then A T C G uh, to be C G A T. Now, if I use G A A T T C, huh? It is still G A A T T C. So it's the same thing. So this is something we call a palindrome sequence. So basically, the word if we uh, reverse complement it, it's going to read as the same. And those are often uh, this kind of pattern often used by a restriction enzymes, uh, restriction endonucleases, oh, officially. In fact, GAATTC is equal on one side. So we can also uh, reverse complement the entire uh, plasma sequence, and I'm going to call it sequence 1RC for reverse complement. Okay, just for exercise. So if now if I count the reverse uh, uh, complementary sequences, the nucleotide should be similar to the original sequence, but slightly different. Uh, you see, the A, C, G, T in the reverse one, A is 2574, but in, uh, in the original sequence, uh, the A, uh, 2574 become T, so because they are reverse complement, right? So A become T, T become A, C become G, G become C, right? So yeah, that's G and that's C. It's kind of double check, make sure R is doing the uh, work we want them to do. So now, so far, it's not very impressive. So what we actually can, so for those uh, single letters, they occur a thousand of times. What happens if we count two letter words? Right, so we can count, say, two letter words. Run, oops, there. Well, there are two letter words, AA, AC, AG, AT. Uh, two letter words, how many should there be? Four, there are four nucleotides. Um, two letter words is actually should be 16. It should be 16 of them. So A, that's A, C. The first position, there are four chances. The second position, there are four chances. Altogether, there are four times four, there are 16 of them. So, we, there, so AA about a thousand times, AC about 477 times. Right. So, well, you can see, you can also kind of estimate the average. So, we can see. Our first nucleotide, right, average about 2700. But if we do this for the two nucleotide, the average become about uh, 600. So it's about fourfold smaller. The same thing for the reverse complement one. And it's also, uh, right, so. So, uh, so the, the uh, original sequence, sequence one, and sequence RC, that's a reverse complement. They all have the same uh, two nucleotide word sequences. Now, now this time, if we do it for three-letter DNA, basically, for the three-letter, that would be, instead of AA, we now count AAA, AAC. So how many is this? Right. So, I'm going to let you think a moment and then see 
how many so let it should be now should be 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 right that actually is 64 so there are 64 combination of three letter DNA words basically 4 to the uh, third power and how many, what's the average frequency of these uh, three letter DNA words? Uh, it's about, probably several hundred. Oh, uh, 15, uh, 115, something around. Okay. So 145. In fact, we can even count, uh, find out that, uh, say, ATT, AAT, some individual uh, word if you want to find that out. Okay. So, but. In the reverse complement uh, sequences, that should be just uh, 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 changed. Right, so ATT reverse complement is AAT, and so in the in the original sequence ATT is two hundred thirty three. In the reverse complement sequences, it will be AAT become two hundred thirty three. Right, so the, the result. Uh, also switch. Now I'm going to let you work on the four letter DNA words on your own. So what you can do is uh, well you can copy paste from the three letter DNA word and then modify them into the four letter word. And basically that three should be all changed to four. Right? Now you can see the result. You can do this also for five letter words. And then I'm going to let you you can pause the video and work on your own for a while. So okay, after you have finished working on then let's look at this six letter DNA word. Many of the restriction uh, enzyme we use in the class are six letter DNA word. Why do we choose six? Right. For example, the equal R1 side is G A A T T C. And how many GATTT sites are in PMSH2? And we used uh, some other uh, restriction enzyme analyze tool like a, a plasmid AP uh, editor, APE. And we know our answer there. But here, we can also try to find it out here. So you can work on your own. But I type some sequence also at the bottom. So, right, so let me see. That. And first we count all the six letter DNA words and then we look at the result of GAATTC and then that's basically how many times GAATTC is. It's five times. Now because this is a palindrome sequence, right? So if we look at the reverse complemented sequences, that's the reverse complemented sequences, we should also see five times. It doesn't change. Now, we, now, oops, uh, words. Uh, so the longer, remember, the longer uh, the words, the less frequently should occur in DNA. That's generally the, the case in general. So we can do the, now let's study the eight letter words. Now you can see there are many of the eight letter words actually occur zero times. You can actually do a computer the average of it. The average is 0.4. I mean, many of them, the median, which is 50%, is a zero. Well, actually, there is one that actually occurs 13 times. I'm not sure which one it is. You can also draw a histogram. There on the right, you see a histogram. Most of them, it's zero. Well, okay. there are also some one, there's two, and then there's probably one, that's like 13 all the way to the right. Now, this time I'm going to look at the result of an a, a enzyme called NOT1. How many times do you, the NOT1 site occur in PMSH2? It occurred once. So in fact, you can find all the 8-base uh, cutter, 8-base uh, 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 eight uh, word currently once in this PMS2 site. But although those are the other eight uh, base pair words, they, they are actually not 
all of them are the recognized by restriction enzyme. But the, the idea is the longer uh, uh, the restriction enzyme site is, in theory or in general, they should occur uh, less often in the DNA sequences. Okay, have fun.